I always say this to start. What's up, future nieces, nephews, children, and grandchildren? Welcome. Welcome again. Hopefully I'm a hologram at this point. The future is that advanced. But I've got here an amazing friend and special guest, Morty Rosen. Uh, say hello, Morty. Ah, <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> As you can, he, he knows French very well. Cause tell them where you are from. Montreal. Montreal. Province du Quebec. Wow. Oh, Canada. Amazing. And so, tell me, we'll jump. We'll we'll get back to some of that, but I'll cut to the chase of. What's something you wish you had done way back, uh, and tell me another thing that, now you finally have realized about life in general and some takeaways at the young age of uh, 40 that you are <laughs> yeah yeah no anyways yeah um, what, uh, some takeaways about life or then things you wish you had known uh, you I can don't think, really you can have a lot of that's no, and that's great. Not that you, you know, I have seen the philosophical question: Do we regret what we did do or didn't? And the answer is obviously both. But but aside from regrets, what are things that you know? If you could go back, you know, learning a skill, or if, or what would you tell maybe people today that they should, if they're young and getting going, what should they focus on? Any any attributes? Uh, it could be compassion, kindness, or how to treat someone? Not to be so self-centered. Oh, I see. So you had a lot of people be self-centered when you're. Yeah, and and, and what after a long Almost living. Everybody. I see. Now tell me also. So, what is the consequence of being self-centered? What what have you realized is a pro to being altruistic? What to you is a pro? Like why is that so important to you than not being self-centered? Because I'm not self-centered at all. <laughs> nice. No, you're not. That's right. And uh, I, uh, I happen to, to like people of all persuasions. Nice. Um, young, old. Right. Jewish. Yeah, Jewish, yeah, Jewish, whatever. Married. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Funny. I had a German... Uh, Wife, away. yes, he did. I will admit that she wasn't a Nazi. Oh, I mean, you, this guy always says this about oh, my German wife is not a Nazi. We know. Well, well, but I had a German friend that I never met, but have all kinds of pictures of him. Yeah. And um, from Germany. Yep. Berlin. This is Peter. Yeah. And he he wore Nazi stuff. Yeah, he's a teacher. He's a Nazi teacher. Hey, a lot of people a they're indoctrinated. In yeah. Uh, I don't know if he taught. I Nazi, see. Nazi in school. Talked Nazi. Yeah. But I saw all the pictures of his friends because he would send me all his friends. Right. Having Nazi parties. I see. And. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue. Um, <laughs> I accepted that too. Nice. Um, Do you? Uh, is there? I heard a saying once, everyone should take care of their teeth, <laughs> invest, and there's something else. Like, overall, fitness-wise, health-wise, is there anything people should do now that they aren't thinking about? Yes. Like what? Put away all kinds of money for a rainy day. <laughs> Don't always depend on your parents. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fair. I think I was a little bit lucky. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people think like, oh, the inheritance will take care of me, but you're right. You never know. Like a lot of people should save their own money. Yeah, I think you should. Absolutely. I mean, um, I, uh, I didn't uh, worry about it very much. <laughs> but everything turned out very well. Indeed, indeed. That's, yeah, whatever. That's fine. But uh, um, I think if I came back again. Yes. To this world. If I he was reincarnated. The future. Yes, I'm yeah. thinking of being reincarnated. Nice, nice. What would, what, what, what would you do? I would think 
uh, not to depend on my parents so much. I see. Right. On. I don't think it was fair. I was an only child, and uh, because I was an only child, I think I took a lot for granted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't see uh, poverty, but then on the other hand, my mother came from a wealthy home too, and she, yeah, yeah, she, that's fine. she didn't see poverty either. Well, and, and I, I personally have this belief that a janitor could be extremely successful if they went from the projects to being a janitor. Just like the, the millionaire, not just millionaire, but like a Kardashian who had a hundred million, mm-hmm. turns that into a couple billion. That's success as well. It's right. all relative. Because right. like this one Kardashian made her lipstick company boom, but she was already worth a hundred million. But like, she made it into a two billion dollar yeah, company, just like right the Compton that. janitor. You yeah. know, it's all exactly. relative. So it doesn't matter about who where you came from. In my opinion, it's like what do you do with the the hand you're dealt? Like we talked about this. You know, that's everything to me. I also remembered as a child mm-hmm. following uh, World War Two. Yeah. I, I I remember seeing how many poor people became very, very wealthy after the war in Montreal. Montreal was booming at that time. Wow. What what killed Montreal was the suffragists. Suffragists. That's yeah, yeah. when when they left by the thousands oh, I see, I see. from Quebec from Montreal. I see. And that's what wrecked Montreal. Interesting. And Has it recovered? That is what built Toronto. Oh, okay. So Toronto, Toronto was a moved village. To Tor- yeah, oh, yeah. I remember it. In be- what year? Oh, in the um, uh, late forties and fifties. It was a village, really. Oh, like how many people? It was you a mean, little village. How many hundred thousand? I don't really know. Was, what it was yeah, 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 that's fair. No, that's fair. That's fair. But uh, but I do. It wasn't the mecca. Yeah. There was nothing to Toronto. There right. were closed on Sundays. I see, I see. M- movies were closed. Yeah, it was Restaurants small. Restaurants were closed. I see, I get it. <laughs> you could walk down town in Toronto and hardly see anybody walking. Yeah. It, it, it was... I do remember that. A small little village. Right. And um, once... Once René Lévesque <laughs> came into power in uh, Quebec, mm-hmm. the uh, Quebec separatists, movement began uh, that's when people started moving um, their banks uh, okay. their safety deposit vaults because he did threaten that he is going to go through every safety deposit vault in Quebec <laughs> yeah. to see what everybody had they took everybody grabbed vaults in Ontario mm. and you couldn't get a vault in Ontario wow. after that my mother had to go right to Toronto wow. to get a vote. So has it recovered in Quebec ever since the separatist movement? Has it recovered okay, or is it still because the signs are all French now like there's like you tell me. There's not an English sign. No there is not an English sign no, right. When you go into a kosher butcher shop you better know French. Uh, yeah, you know, not, yeah right right I see. It's all in French. Yep. It's not allowed. It's literally not allowed. You're yeah. not allowed. Yeah. And they also, as you may know, or you may not know, they have a language police. That's that's what they're called, the language police. The language police. Yes. And I remember they closed up many Jewish places who refused to take their English signs down. Wow, wow. And replaced them with French signs. They were closed up by the government. I remember your story when you had muttered or uttered just something in English, or no, no, they thought you spoke English and they beat you up, right? That yes, like that I was language 29. police. Yeah, and then this, would you say that classifies the language police as like the people? Uh, no, this is no, just this is just corrupt the, school. A police officer, I remember he was very short. Yeah. He wasn't. I think he he may have even been younger than me. I was twenty nine. Right. He may. Have you said been pardon. Twenty five. Oh, he's talking about. So no, you said, I said I didn't realize. It. I was looking through a window. Yeah. In downtown Montreal, at a corner, in a store. Right. To see the merchandise, I was very, very involved looking at the merchandise, and all I heard was I didn't realize it that it was two police officers. Yeah. One remained in the car. 
one came out to the curb of the sidewalk and, and he yelled, Work your day! <laughs> so I said, hey, Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Pardon? I was very, very angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I said it in English. Right, right. Uh, knocked me down to the ground. Uh, uh, dragged me, dragged me to to the police car, threw me in on the floor. Brutal. Jesus. Brutal. All I said was pardon. <laughs> pardon. <laughs> Such an innocent, like I just pardon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's brutal. I couldn't uh, imagine. Took me to a cell, to the police station. Yeah. I got locked into the cell. Wow. Um, there was a Jewish lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> that had happened to be walking by okay. and saw and heard what was going on. Yeah, I see. And he came to the police station. No. No, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. From the police station, I got transferred to the city jail. Ah. Uh, and locked, locked up in a jail cell. Yeah. The, then I heard the lawyer ta talking in English, saying, I saw everything that went on there, and this was totally unprovoked. <laughs> yeah. And um, you got a free lawyer. <laughs> well, I had a lawyer. Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah, father nice, got nice. the oh, okay. best oh, yeah, lawyer you were in good. Montreal yeah, yeah. at that time. Right on. His name was Sammy Berger. Oh, I'll have to look him up. He's one of the yeah. best criminal lawyers. Wow. Okay, <laughs> you were good. I was lucky. You were taken care of. No. So I had both lawyers. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Both lawyers. Perfect. Uh, mind you, I was out of jail the criminal now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, of course. I didn't love it at all. No, no, you didn't love it. But that sounds great. <laughs> no. You're out an hour. Yeah. And uh, and um, so when it went to trial, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't win. <laughs> really? No. Oh, because the police corrupt. So Benefit of the doubt. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Benefit of. I didn't lose either. Benefit of the doubt. I see. I get it. <laughs> and oh yes, I was wearing a black leather jacket. Yeah. Um. Uh, which may have looked rough. <laughs> but what what the police didn't know was. I bought that jacket from a police officer who was my buddy, that I met in Miami. Yeah. I bought the jacket from him, because he got too too big as a police officer. <laughs> That's to awesome. wear that ja jacket, That's it was awesome. too small for him, and it fit me perfectly. Nice, nice. So I bought it from him. <laughs> Great idea. A police idea. officer. Yeah. Because I remember the lawyer said, don't wear that leather jacket when you're down in town. Really? I got it from a police officer. <laughs> Why would the police not like a police jacket? Yeah. 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 That's Imagine funny. that. That's so obscure. So that's what happened. Wow. Was and that the only issue? Did yeah. You, yeah, you never had an issue. Did any friends of yours have issues like that? I or, don't. No, yeah, you were good. So it's a rare occurrence. Rare yeah, occurrence. Yeah, I think they were power mad. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. You know, those, those, I was 29, so those, those were the days where, where it began. Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. police, my friend went to the club accepted this too. He would talk oh, to me. I see. Try to convince you. I met him in Miami. Okay, nice, nice. And we became fast friends. There you go. And uh, I know that uh, I w would attempt to speak French to him. <laughs> it's okay, talk English. <laughs> but your French is lousy. Oh, anyway. <laughs> man, no, come on. That's yeah, funny. That That's time. funny, man. So, but he wouldn't talk, talk English to anybody. Really? No. Not uh, not um, outside of work. I see. I At see. that time, he had to talk English I when see. he was arresting people. Yeah. And he arrested a Jewish woman. And I remember how wow how he described her. Oh yeah. Oh, officer, <laughs> you are so <laughs> so handsome. <laughs> very very handsome. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's how you get out of a ticket. Bodybuilder, huge. Yeah, big guy, big guy. And very handsome. Yeah, right. Very handsome guy. I see. 
not to, not to jump topics too much, but I, I do want to extract the Hochma from that cop of yours. For me, I need advice. Do I risk all my assets and accumulation of the, the little wealth I have now and get married and risk losing that to somebody? Or do I just keep putting my head down and wait till later on when I have a good, good, secure prenup in place? Or like, should I build the wealth and then find someone? Or should I risk it and build wealth with someone but then risk losing half no. of it to them? No. Like, should I work? Don't like, how risk much? It. Don't risk it. Be- because, you know, like, to me, I've not been inclined to get married. But, but I it. I don't blame you. And now, is that something you believe back in the day, or just today's society? Today's society. Oh, with today's society, because like they'll take you for it, all you. Yeah. Not that's like what in you my think. Day. Yeah. It wasn't like well in my day. What, what about what was different back then versus now with relationships, marriage, and divorce, and. I have to be careful what I <laughs> say here. But Why you hear it canceled? No one watches this. <laughs> the Jewish girls, even in my day. Yeah. You remember about the red car? Oh yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, the, the person just wanted to date him for the red convertible, so he played a, a joke on them and pulled up with a rented car, a taxi, or something. It was a taxi? a taxi, taxi, and then she was pissed. She said, oh, "But I thought you had a red, I do have a red car, but I'm not driving yeah. tonight." Ada Shore. So yeah, so so that's the thing. Like, should young men like myself? just focus on building themselves up that's right right now yes because people used to always get married when they were 25 i'm 26 they used to always get married when they were 25 21 like you know i know you were younger back in the in the 60s 70s it was very popular for people just to get married in their 20s right what about 17 i know this guy this guy got married very young but you're an outlier so George, too. Oh, George, there you go. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It's a whole different... Yeah, there you go. You guys are German buddies. <laughs> uh, but, like... Oh, well, that ends in Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Hey, it happens. 50-50 yeah. chance. But this is what I'm saying. I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about it these days. And that's all. It'd be different if I didn't have anything. But I'm lucky. I've got some businesses, you know. Don't lose it. Don't lose it, yeah. Because these... These women today. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> they, they, these women today, okay. I, They'll take you for all you've got. I don't know. Well, but things are changing. It's like in this day and age, you know, people, I don't women. Trust them. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You know, though, more women are graduating post secondary today than ever before. More women than men today. So, in my opinion is we are going to see like a female dominated corporate America. If that's you, fine. That's fine. Same. I actually wait, think that's great. W- wait a little longer. <laughs> and then be the, the gold digger. That's right. Okay. The, or, or, you, you know, in Yiddish, in Yiddish, a sh- uh, shorer. A shorer is like a freeloader. <laughs> you don't have to be a, a freeloader or uh, a gold digger. Okay, okay. You can hold your own. I know. I would never actually, and I would the, never actually the, do that. And the prospective bride Yes. Can also hold her own. I was gonna say everyone can hold their own. Exactly. That's, that's right. how I like it. That's, that's how I want right. it to be. But I'm scared it wouldn't be that way. That's I, I'd like a society like that. And I'll tell you on a side note, I say make it instead of sixty forty for university graduation numbers, make it re- ninety ten women men respectively. Like it, at this point, let's have women run the world because like clearly dudes have been nuking everyone and like doing world war than like. You gotta wonder if things would be different with women around the world. I won't live long enough to. Stop! I to Stop. Stop. Stop! But I don't I, know. I don't know if women should run the world. I would say a certain 